Hey guys, here we are for chapter 15, section four, and we're gonna talk about coal. Coal, kind of the dirtiest of the fossil fuels. Let's jump in. Now, conventional coal, you know, we dig into the ground, pull coal out in a chunk. It's very plentiful. There's still lots of it just in the ground, ready to pull out. It does provide a high net energy yield. Fairly easy to get to, and when we pull it out, it doesn't have to be processed like oil does. So we get a higher net energy. It makes the cost low, but using it does have a very high environmental impact. Once again, it tends to be dirty, puts more CO2 and just other pollutants into the air. Now we can produce both gaseous and liquid fuels from coal. But if we have to convert the coal into either a gas or liquid form, well, then its net energy drops down. So we get a lower net energy. Once again, we're having to put more energy into it to get a usable product out of it. And then it winds up having a higher environmental impact than just the conventional coal because we start using it for other things, we wind up having to dig more coal out of the ground. And coal is very disruptive. It's strip mining, taking the tops off of mountains. When we get coal, we tend to devastate the environment where it is. It is a solid fossil fuel. It's just a rock. It's a chunk. It looks like a rock lighter, but it's formed from the remains of leftover plants, land plants. And the plants die if the conditions are correct and they get pushed under, under heat and pressure, they can turn into coal as opposed to oil, which was animals that died. We burn it in power plants. It, this was 37% of the world's electricity in 2017. So we're talking all energy sources combined, burning oil, burning natural gas, uh, geothermal, solar, everything concerned, 37% came from coal. Now, who are the largest consumers? Who is consuming, you know, buying, burning, and using the most coal? China is number one, actually by a pretty large shot. Then the United States, then India. This is not surprising. We're the three largest population countries. Currently population, China, India, of course that's probably gonna switch, and then the United States. Though the fact that we're using it the most is not shocking. Now, if you look at the picture, well I guess I'm gonna put it down here. If you look at the picture below me here, we're going to take a look at the coal. Now, the way it kind of goes is it goes from, I hope I'm pointing this right because it flips up in my dyslexic brain. I might be looking at the wrong way, but it kind of is a blue arrow on one end and a red arrow on the other end. And this is kind of going from the more moisture in the type of coal to the less moisture and we can actually generate more heat from it, you know, when we go to burn it. So as we start with peat, which really isn't coal, it's kind of in the early process of something that could become coal, but we get enough heat and pressure under peat, like peat moss, then it can turn into ligite. It's kind of a brown, still sort of a soft. Once again, longer and more heat, we get to bituminous coal. And this is stuff that we begin to start burning uh, it's soft coal, if you will. Tends to be used as a fuel, it's high heat content, more heat and pressure than we get anthracite. Now anthracite is kind of the high quality, lower sulfur, that's what we're really after. But we can use both the bituminous and the anthracite when it really gets into this coal. And that's what we're looking for in the ground, typically, when we go to mine it. Let's talk about some of these environmental costs. You know, what does it come down to? What does it take to actually get coal? Well, it severely degrades the land. Now you took a look back here. This is mountain topping. We literally go in, we have a mountain and the coal will be here. We just blow this part of the mountain top off and then we begin to take the coal out and dig down. Because quite often coal will come in seams. We'll get several layers of it. So we will mountain top, we literally blow the top off of a mountain, push it off, scrape the coal out, 
and kind of leave it as is. We do strip mining. If it's, you know, once again, we just dig everything out of the top, scoop up the coal. So we get it by mountain topping, strip mining. And then we'll have mines where we go down under the ground and pull it out from the ground. Shaft down, dig it out, pull it up. It depends on how close it is to the surface. No matter how we go about it, it severely degrades the land. We also wind up getting a lot of water and air pollution from it. When we're doing mountain topping, we're stripping things off, we're exposing all that, it rains, and then the rain erodes and washes away this dirt and rock and everything that's been trapped in the rock, and it just flows down into our local stream sources. So we get a water pollution from it. When we burn it, we get soot. We, it, black smoke comes up off of it. So take a look at the picture back here, the smokestacks. Now this isn't white steam that we're releasing from cooling the power plant. This is burning the coal and the smoke pouring straight out. That black soot, it goes up into the sky and then it settles back down to the ground. So we get a lot of just literally you know, dirt from burning it. If you've ever been at a campfire and been burning and that, say you get this kind of black soot on it, it's the same type of thing because we're burning plant material. We also get trace amounts of mercury and some radioactive materials. Once again, this stuff has been pressured and treated and down in the ground for a long time. And it's got trace amounts of other stuff. So when we burn it, we're releasing that into the air and it'll also settle down into our waterways anywhere else and also washes down into it. Now we have in the United States and some other countries required our companies that burn coal to put scrubbers into their smokestacks. So we're pulling some of this pollutant out in the smokestack that we can then, it's not going into the air, but that stuff has to be stored. It produces what we call coal ash, just like ash, like what you get in your fireplace at the end. Well, this coal ash is gonna have mercury, it's gonna have trace amounts of lithium, it's gonna have some radioactive materials, and that stuff has to be stored. It really should be treated as hazardous waste. However, our lobbyists at Washington, the coal power companies to be, have been able to get it to be treated just as regular household waste. And it isn't household waste. Now, sometimes we'll put it into things like asphalt or into concrete, so it's kind of trapped and out of the way but a lot of it just gets put into landfills or it's put out into retention ponds, kind of in a slurry. And this stuff can be highly toxic, but it's one of these things that coal winds up being dirty. Let's look at the picture of just how electricity is typically processed. Now we've talked about this in a few different things before, but by and large, electricity has to have a turbine spinning. What we do is we take coal, so you can see here on the one end, coal's going up the little ladder, dumping into the furnace where it's burning it. It burns it, it heats the water, the water turns into steam, steam spins our turbine, we collect that steam, condense it back into water, and then we can release it. So you see that big opening one. We have white smoke coming out. It's not smoke, that's just steam that we're releasing from it. But then on the other end is where we're getting our smokestacks from the power. And the, then we take this ash that's burned in there, and then you show it going over this big tank, goes into a dump trunk for the ash, and that's something that has to be done with it. It should be stored more as hazardous waste, but a lot of times it isn't. Once again, if we can use it in things like asphalt or concrete, we do, but lots of it are harming the environment in terms of environmental waste. If you take a look at the graph I have back here, this is the United States use of coal versus China's use of coal. And you notice there around, oh, you know, 2003, something like that, China's use has gone off the chart. Our coal use has been fairly steady. It's actually dropping off a bit because advances in solar and wind power are competing with coal. Natural gas, solar, and wind are much cleaner, and their costs have gotten more effective, so our coal use is dropping off. There's still loads in the ground, but it's a dirtier coal. 
and our use has gone down to more like 30% than up around this 35 or so that it used to be. We used to burn as much as 50% just back in the early 2000s, but we've taken it down into the 30s. So we're using a lot less, but however, take a look, China is using a lot more, you know, almost four to five times the amount that we're currently using in the United States. Now, some countries in Europe, Germany and others are committed to be by 2025, just in five years, no coal. They're putting more money into their renewables. And part of this comes down to that cost, which we'll look at in a minute. This next graph we're looking at, now let's look down two steps where it has coal 100%. This would be if you and I were heating our house with coal. That means you and I would be burning coal. We put it into the furnace, and we're burning it, and we're warming our house. So that's the 100%, if you will. That's just kind of the normal burning of coal. Coal-fired electricity is releasing 286% of the amount of CO2 than if you or I were burning it. They can get it to burn much hotter. It's releasing more CO2 and getting more ash out of it. If we turn coal into these synthetic gas or liquid, in other words, we can turn it into a natural gas. We can turn coal into like a synthetic oil, if you will, where you can get gasoline from it. But then, once again, the CO2 rates are actually much higher, 150%, compared to some other fossil fuels. Tar sand, remember we talked about getting oil out of the sand? Well, that would be the tar sand, 92%. Oil, 86. Natural gas, only 58%. Nuclear, getting down to 17, or geothermal. In all of these, there's some CO2 release in what we're doing. But as you can see, in a lot of them, it is much less than when we're trying to get things out of coal. So we mentioned this aspect of price, full cost pricing, Let's apply that to coal. Right now, the coal industry has been lobbying. They go to Washington, they set up, say, hey, you need to give subsidies to us. Coal is very important for the American people. We need electricity to be cheap so people can run all their stuff. And yes, we do want our electricity to be cheap, but here's the thing. We are keeping the cost of coal lower than it really should be so that we'll burn it. If coal was at the same price of being worth going out there and getting more wind energy or solar energy, we would get solar or wind energy. But they're keeping the cost low so that we continue to use it. But if we actually paid the real cost, if you just stop the subsidies, hey, you got to get the coal and you got to sell the coal for what people are going to buy it. Stop taking tax dollars to give all the tax breaks so we can get it. Coal is not an absolute necessity of a commodity. We have other avenues with which we can go. Once again, burning natural gas and oil is actually releasing less CO2 into the environment and less pollutants. So we use some of that, but coal's prices have been kept unusually low because we're not putting any of these environmental or health costs in. When people wind up getting sick and needing Medicare because of health problems, that's not factored in at all. So how do we include full cost pricing? It's not actually difficult. However, I realize if you're in the world of the coal industry, it's pretty difficult because that's where you're making your money. So this is what makes things difficult. It's not always an easy decision because lots of people's lives are impacted by it, but this is what we would need to do. We'd have to phase out the subsidies and the tax breaks, but that's what we have to do. There has to be a phase out. Over the next eight years, we're going to cut back this amount, forcing the coal companies to get more efficient at what they do, or once again, phase their operations out. We need to have stricter air pollution controls. We can put more controls on it. We can have stricter things. We can pull more pollutants out of the air, but it does, does all cost. We have to put the technology in the smokestacks, what have you. We need to tax CO2 emissions, plain. 
If it has greater CO2 emissions, there has to be a tax from it. And that money can go into the development of renewable energies, energy that's cleaner. And we have a lot of options for that. Also, this coal ash needs to be regulated. Right now, it's not. They have successfully lobbied that it can just be normal trash. It's not normal trash. If you and I had coal ash at our house, I guarantee you, we would have to treat it as hazardous waste. The waste people wouldn't take it, we'd have to carry it as hazardous waste, like we're supposed to do with our paint and paint strippers and other hazardous things that we have at the house. They're not supposed to be pitched in the trash, they need to be taken care of at a special facility. We need to make sure that coal ash gets treated as hazardous waste, that it really rightfully is. Once again, there's always trade-offs, right? Coal has its advantages. There's a lot of it there. I think we'd be better to leave it for the rainy day when we absolutely might need it sometime instead of pulling it out as fast as we can. But that's just me. It is medium to high internet energy. So we get a lot of energy of what it takes to get it out of the ground. And as long as you don't talk about the environmental costs, which we should, it's very cheap to get. The disadvantages, severe land disruption and water pollution. You can't get away from that. The mountain topping, strip mining, which are the most common ways we go about it, completely devastate the landscape. And by doing so, winds up causing a lot of water pollution. The fine particle mist, uh, when we, all the fine particles from burning it or even getting it out of the ground, we wind up getting a lot of mercury emissions into the air. And also when we burn it, it produces sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, we learn, when it is released into the air, it forms into sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So these SO2s, SO3s that get released, join with the water, forming H2SO4, sulfuric acid leading to acid rain. So these pollutants, when they're released, lead into it, not to mention the CO2 leading to our climate change. Can't get away from those facts. Future of coal, what's going to happen? Well, over 200 coal burning power plants closed in the US just between 2010 and 2018. Why? Mainly because of the increased competition from natural gas, wind, and solar power. We've had a lot of grassroots political opposition to the use of coal. We have other alternatives and we need to use them. A lot of our coal producers in America right now are actually exporting it. They're exporting to Africa and Asia because these countries are ramping up their coal production. So our coal companies here, that's really not a solution for the world for us to ship it somewhere else. But in the United States, we have closed a lot of hours for some of these reasons, and the coal is getting shipped somewhere else. Of course, the long-term goal would be to wean everybody off of it, so it's a lot cleaner for the entire world. But we'll have to see how that goes. Now we talked about you can convert coal into gaseous or liquid fuels, different forms. So it's just a conversion, if you will. Uh, SNG is synthetic natural gas. Synthetic, once again, we are synthesizing, making it. We can take the coal, run it through a process. Have to admit, I do not know the process for turning coal into natural gas, but it's a process we can do. We can also turn it into methanol or a synthetic gasoline. Now, obviously, when we burn it as natural gas, well, then when it's releasing, there's less CO2, but there's energy in the process of turning it into the gas. There's energy in the process turning it into the liquid. But we can take liquid and put it into our gas tanks for our cars. So there are benefits to it in that way. However, to do that requires mining like 50% more coal, and we get the lower net energy cost, and obviously we wind up with more damage to the environment. If we're pulling more coal to turning into gas or turning into liquids, we're still having to mine more coal, and it tends to be very 
disadvantages. So once again, just these advantages and disadvantages. Again, you know, large supplies, we can turn it into these fuels, lower air pollution than just burning the coal itself. Of course, when you factor in all the energy transfer, it can be difficult. Taking it to this lower or medium energy, getting more coal and just higher CO2 emissions from it. So there you go with coal. Coal, kind of the dirty side of our fossil fuels. Not that any of them are clean, but sort of on the range. We kind of natural gas as the cleanest burning, then oil, then coal. Hopefully we'll begin to ramp down our coal production in the United States as we look at some other energy sources. And we'll look at one of those tomorrow, which is nuclear power. Anyway, take care guys, and we'll see you tomorrow.